this video I'll show you how to add a PID controller that's a proportional integral derivative controller to control an unmanned car in Torx. We will um, use that controller like this uh, to control the engine speed, car RPM. We'll control the engine speed um, and we'll give it a set point of 3000. So we will try and get the engine speed to go to 3000 RPM and we'll do nothing else. Um, and we'll do that by controlling the throttle, which is the accelerator pedal. So I'm assuming that you've got Torx set up on your computer um, and you've downloaded the, the C sharp code from here. The PID controller um, the information you need is on this web page, um, Wikipedia PID controller. If you scan down, you'll find um, uh, lots of useful information and some pseudocode at the uh, towards the bottom. We're going to use that pseudocode, which is here. Um, the pseudocode is a complete PID algorithm and we'll cut and paste that and put it into our code. Um, if you want to read the background of it, if you click on this reference link here, um, it will take you to a cruise control example. This is speed control. Uh, and you can see how uh, the PID controller works there. But coming back to our, the code that we're going to do, we're going to be using this. So, Go back to the downloaded C sharp code for the unmanned car that you've got. Open it up in Visual Studio. And you should see this page. This is the basic unmanned car. It doesn't do much. Um, if T gets to greater than five seconds, it moves into first gear. So let's just take that out. We don't. We're not going to have this thing moving, moving at all. Uh, we don't want to press the accelerator pedal, and we'll keep the steering in the centre. So let's just do. Um, Let's just uh, put the brakes on. So we've got the brakes on and the car's not moving. Now we now we want to add this PID controller um, so we can control the accelerator to give an RPM of 3000. So go back to the pseudocode. Let's copy that entire block. Copy. And we paste it in. We can paste it in here. So I've pasted the code from Wikipedia. It'll come up with a lot of errors underlined in red because it doesn't know what to do with it. So just Follow me as I delete the last line, go to start, we don't need that. Wait, DT, we don't need that. Now the previous error, all these things need to be defined. So previous error equals naught. Let's just type that in up here. Cross. 
else. I put a semicolon on the end of that line, and that line is fixed. Um, these t now this line here is where we where we need the loop. So I've actually defined I've defined these two further up here now, so I don't need these here again. So I'm just going to delete them. I shouldn't put them in. Get rid of the start. Let's tab all these across. Put semicolons on the end of every line. Uh, just define everything in red, underlined in red, needs to be defined up above. So let's just do it. Double error. Double set point. Let's give it a value of set point. No, I'll leave that there. Double measured value. And I've typed it all in there. So we have all the variables defined in this area. Error, set point, measured value, derivative, output. I've got the con I've got the um, control constants here on on one line. With all of these variables you can either spread them out or put them on one line. If you put them on one line you separate them with commas. Um, and this is the PID controller, this bit here. The error is worked out from the set point take away the measured value. The integral is integrating the previous value, um, is integrating the error in, um, in trapezoidal chunks. The derivative is the error take away the previous error. The output is the summation of all three, the P, the I, the D. And the previous error is remembered for the next time round, so the integral, uh, so the derivative can use it. And now we need to connect this PID controller. We need to connect the output to the car accelerator. And we do that by typing in this line car dot excel equals output. So that's the output from the PID controller goes into the car accelerator. Now the measured value the measured value comes before that and that is equal to the car dot rpm we want to measure the RPM. So we're measuring the RPM, we're working out the error, we're doing the PID control, and then we're sending the output to the accelerator. Uh, at this point you'll probably see that the value of KP, I put one in here, but if the error, if the if the car is doing, if the engine is doing say 2000 RPM and the set point is 3000 RPM, then the error is 1000 RPM. 1000 R, 1000 times 1 would give 1000 for the accelerator, which is too much. We need 1 is the maximum value. So we need to scale down the, the KP constant. Um, so I'm going to put in a couple of, couple of zeros here. So the KP is 0 0.001. And that should work. So yes, just try it on the on the car, press start. So there's one thing we've forgotten to do, or I've forgotten to do, and that's set the set point. The set point is 3000 RPM. So uh, we can type the set point in um, anywhere. I could, I could type it in up here. Set point equals 3000 RPM. And if you wanted to have moving set points, you could change it down here. But yeah, let's try that. So um, I'm going to run this. Run.
ね。And the engine speed is going to 3,000 RPM, just below. That's just proportional control, and it will stay there. Now, to get to get results from here, um, I might as well show you that. Let's just stop this code. There's a line here. All your results are saved into a file called myresults.csv. Um, so you can open it up in Excel. And whatever you type here will go into that file. So if you wanted to look at the, the time, the accelerator pedal, and maybe the RPM, let's add RPM to this. So I can just go plus comma to separate it, and then plus the RPM. That's car dot RPM. Two string. Um, I can get to get rid of those. So I've modified it, so now uh, it's going to write three three parameters into that file, which you can open up in Excel, um, and then you'll be able to see uh, the response um, in the format such as this. Okay.